it's day one of Booktubeathon. Woohoo! Um, I'm trying to record with my phone again. I'm gonna try a vlog style for this week, so we'll see how that goes. I was finally able to get some sleep last night. Last the night before, I was up at like four o'clock in the morning and I couldn't go back to sleep and stuff. So it's currently 9:17 a.m. So I got to sleep in, rest up for Booktubeathon, and then also getting ready to go to Oregon on Thursday. So I'm hoping to take you guys along with me for that as well. Um, so I'll give you guys an update a little bit later. I'm gonna go shower and get ready for the day. And the first book I'm gonna be reading is is um, A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. So, And then I've also got a lot of filming I've got to do today. So I've got to film an unboxing even though I actually already opened the box. <laughs> I couldn't wait, so I opened the box already, but I'll show you the guys, show you guys the content. And then also I've got to film July wrap up and July book haul. So check in with you guys later. Oh my stars, I feel so much better. So I'm in my kitchen, I'm gonna get some food, and then I'm gonna start A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein while I'm munching on some breakfast and then after that I'll put on some makeup and get going on some filming but I'm so excited. I feel so much better. Yesterday was kind of a poopy day and I was just so tired and just didn't feel good and stuff so I feel a lot better today. Still not 100% but I'm ready to get going on some reading and yep here we go. There's like a talent show or something that um, I can be a part of. I always recite this poem. Um, I, I usually do like poem recitings and uh, but this is always one that I do. It's called Crowded Tub. There's too many kids in this tub. There's too many elbows to scrub. I just washed a behind that I'm sure wasn't mine. There's too many kids in this tub. <laughs> Anyways, that's one of my favorite Shel Silverstein poems. It's easy to remember and it just always cracks me up. Also, I just watched the video for the challenges, the video challenge, and that's going to be pretty tricky, but um, if you guys go check it out, I, th I think it looks pretty fun, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'll give it a shot, and then also the Instagram one is really fun, too. The Instagram one is like, uh, take a picture of books that got you into reading, and I'm going to do my Dinotopia books, and so I'm pretty excited about that. I love Dinotopia, so talk to you guys later. I'm already like halfway through. Uh, a Light in the Attic. I mean, his poems are really easy to read, and I feel like poem books are pretty pretty quick and easy to get through, so that's part of the reason why I picked it. But anyways, I'm enjoying it, although my mind is wandering because I keep thinking about what I'm going to do for the video challenge. <laughs> so anyways, talk to you guys later. So I've just finished A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. He's just classic. These are the poems that I grew up on as a kid and like what I compare every other poetry to. <laughs> like, so, I mean, most of them are fun and kind of childish and, you know, a lot of them make me laugh. But then there's also some really profound ones and some sad ones and things that I feel like you can learn a lot of life lessons from. And so that's part of the reason why it's fun to read them as an adult and see them from a different perspective. So I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to read yet. I think I'm going to take a break and go... Um, get some ideas for the YouTube video that I'm going to post and uh, maybe get some filming done, put on some makeup and then I'll pick the next one. I think I'm going to go with Black Stallion. My, st my stack of books is up on my, up on my shelf. So I think I'm going to read the Black Stallion next because that one's kind of, it's thicker and I need to get it from the library before we leave so I can watch it and then, and then I can give it back like before we leave. So I lied. I decided to come outside and read. So, Black Stallion by Walter Farley. Here we go. Hanging out with my doggie, who's over there. 
Um, I'll have to show them to you guys soon. But anyways, just decided, you know what, I'm not ready to put on makeup and film yet, so I'm just going to relax. I'm just going to wait until the afternoon to do that stuff. I'm still kind of in my morning my morningness and morningness to me means just chill so anyways I'm lucky that I don't have to work right now um, I'm like squinting because it's kind of bright outside but anyways so on to the black stallion da, 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 da. hey everybody so just an update it is now oh, you could probably say it's 304 Right now, in the afternoon, I just got done filming three videos for the YouTube channel that I needed to get caught up on. Um, I haven't done the booktube challenge yet, um, just because I need my husband's help with filming that. And you can see our totally nasty thing behind us, uh, dresser. But I wanted to show you the after effects of doing the bookstagram challenge. So the booktube challenge was to post about a book that got you into reading or books that got you into reading and mine was the Dinotopia series and so I was so this is the after effects let me just so this is kind of this is the bed after after me trying to figure out how to do a cool Instagram photo because I'm not very good at that yet um, I decided to just go outside and do it and I think I got a pretty good picture so I am halfway just about halfway through Black Stallion I'll probably finish it by the end of tonight but I am hoping to get my my film video my my video filmed and then edited uh, before the end of the day hopefully so I think I'm getting caught up in the competition aspect of it instead of just enjoying it because I'm kind of stressing out and my husband's like, you're getting too caught up in the details, just post it about things that you love. And so he's good at keeping me on track of, you know, what's important. So anyways, we'll catch up with you guys later. Hey everybody, just an update. Um, it is 11.32 at night on the first day of Booktubeathon. I did the Instagram challenge, I did the video challenge. I am most of the way through my second book, which is The Black Stallion. Um, I'm most of the way through, I've got about 75 more pages to go, so I'll probably finish that tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be able to finish t t tonight, I'm pretty, pretty tired. Yeah, I think I like Black Beauty better. The Black Stallion is kind of, there's not really a moral to it. I don't really feel like there's, you know, lessons to be learned. There's, uh, there's no like high stakes that are, you know, there's nothing at risk in this story. I mean, the most exciting part is the beginning, I would say, when the boy's on the island with the horse, like, that's about it. But the rest of this has been kind of a drag. There's, you know, it's gee whiz and bajabbers, mister, you know, that's a fine horse and stuff and and I love horse stories and but this one is just kind of it's kind of dragging so I'm ready to get to the next book I read the prologue to my next one which was the wings of fire book four and I'm ready to get to that one um that's it for day one I will check in with you guys tomorrow good night <laughs> morning peoples good morning it is day two of the booktubeathon I've got about 75 pages left in my second book so I'll be finishing that today and starting my third book today finally got a good night's sleep last night and then I saw the challenges for today the Instagram challenge and the booktube challenge or the YouTube challenge they're both very similar um, in the fact that you have to stack books in a in a particular way. I'm pretty excited about that, the fact that I don't have to, I can just take all the books off my shelf and, you know, do both challenges pretty, pretty easily. So I'll be doing that later this afternoon. I'm just, I'm already dressed, waiting for my dog to do his thing. You wanna see him? There he is. Russell, hi buddy. Anyways, so yeah, so let's go get some breakfast. I'm planning on going and having lunch with my husband and my father-in-law today. They're off doing uh, some construction stuff uh, so yeah so let's get to reading and let's get this book over with because the black stallion is kind of grating on my nerves a little bit um, it got more interesting a little bit because for me I like horse racing so I really enjoy horse racing and it got to a point 
where that is now sort of the key plot point. Actually, to me, it almost kind of is reading like Seabiscuit fan fiction or something. Because, so if you know anything about the story of Seabiscuit, right, or if you've seen the movie, he was, you know, the fastest horse. He was doing really, really awesome against all these big races. But then there was another horse on the opposite coast that was doing really, really amazing. And that was, I think that was War Admiral. Yeah, War Admiral was doing really, really awesome. And so, you know, they had the two, the race, just the two of them to determine who was the fastest horse. Well, there's the exact same situation going on in the world in this. There's two different horses from two different coasts that are the, you know, competing to be the fastest horse, but they haven't raced each other yet. And then now there's, and now there's a race uh, that's specifically for those two horses. Well, meanwhile, the Black Stallion is racing sort of in secret. Uh, they're practicing him and, you know, the boy and the trainer are determined or convinced that the black can uh, outrace both of these two horses. So this whole time I thought it was an Arabian horse. And if you know about racing, you know, only thoroughbreds are allowed in in horse racing, right? So this horse is not, it's not a pure blood Arabian. And that's what I was led to believe during this whole thing. And it's like, no, it's a, it's a thoroughbred. And I was like, oh, well, that's convenient. But, they, but again, there's no stakes. Like the boy's livelihood is not resting on this. The man's livelihood is not resting on this. He's, he's retired and stuff. So there's literally nothing at risk here other than like pride. And so that's part of the reason why I'm frustrated and I don't really feel too invested. I'm just more interested in the outcome of the race, but I am kind of ready to be done with it and get to a new book. So I'll check in with you guys later. We're finally getting to the match race. Dun, dun, dun. Who will win? I'm guessing that the Black Stallion will win, but you know, we'll see. It could be a, you know, major, major upset that we don't know about, but I'm guessing the Black Stallion will win. So just finished the Black Stallion. Walter Farley. Um, my official verdict on it, it's a fun adventure story. I mean, it's kind of one of those stories that just one thing happens after another. It's a good middle grade uh, story. I don't know. I don't think it's going to settle in my heart the way that uh, Black Beauty did. So Black Beauty to me um, had more sort of lessons to learn and had something that was a little bit more meaningful. The Black Stallion, however, I feel like is just the story of a horse and a boy, you know, and the connection that they have together, which is fine, but it just didn't have the same meaning to it as I thought it was going to. I rented the movie from the library. That's what this book was a challenge for. So I rented the movie, so I'm going to watch that today. But that is book number two finished for the book two bathon. Got two books finished and on to Wings of Fire by Tweety Sutherland. I'm really excited to get to this one because I read the prologue last night and it's looking pretty exciting. Onwards to the next book. So this will be book number three. This fulfills the challenge at the end that was like read seven books in seven days. I'm not exactly reading these in order of the challenges, but this was my seventh book that I picked. So just got done eating lunch with my husband and my father-in-law. Uh, we went to Zhao's Asian Cafe, which was surprisingly, it was really good. I've never heard of it before, but they got like, a, they have uh, gluten-free options for noodle and rice bowls and stuff like that, but it's actually really good. I found like the perfect level of heat with this sauce that they gave us, a chili lemongrass sauce. It was just, just right for like my tastes of, of heat. Basically, it just kept my tongue nice and warm uh, without searing my taste buds off so that was nice but yeah just heading home gonna do some more reading and then once my husband gets done helping out my father-in-law then we're gonna head uh, home and we're going to basically get ready for our trip to Oregon so we're gonna be leaving in a couple of days but we need but I want my apartment to be clean you know how it is you want your apartment to kind of or your place to be clean before you go and then when you come back it's nice and clean and you don't have to worry about anything. Also, nothing's left to 
rot in the garbages or in the dishes and stuff like that. So anyways, so that's kind of the plan. So we're going to be doing laundry today and all kinds of fun things. I'll be doing the video and Instagram challenges later and we'll see how that goes. Talk to you later. Bye. So currently watching The Black Stallion, 1978, I think is when it was made. It's super bizarre. It's one of those movies where music plays every once in a while, but there's a lot of sequences where there's no music. It's just like a pan of a landscape or whatever, or it's just the kid wandering across the ship to look at the horse and it's nobody's talking. You know, it's one of those things where it's just, again, there's not a lot of ambient noise during some parts and stuff. You know, I don't know what other way to describe it, but yeah, those old movies where there are a lot of sequences where there's absolutely no music or hardly any sound. And it kind of is just a little bit unnerving because you're just like, what am I supposed to be doing? And then when the music does come, it's really bizarre music, like for some reason. So after the Black Stallion kills the snake and saves the boy, you know, it shows this sequence of the boy sitting on in a completely different part of the island, completely different time of day. And he's standing on the rocks, looking out at the ocean, and it's like this triumphal, almost, this is CNN music, you know, like, and, and I'm like, what's going on? And then it shows the stallion just standing on a cliffside, and it's just like triumphal music, and the boy turns and looks up at the stallion, and I'm like, it's bizarre, it's kind of funky, so we'll sit through it, though. I needed a break, so, from reading, and it's interesting. It's been an interesting experience.